Hello everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of boards, recorder of videos, and tabletop role-playing aficionado. Welcome to Patreon D&D, where Platinum Level patrons and I get together to play Dungeons and Dragons via Discord and Roll20. These sessions are entirely supported by patrons of patreon.com slash roguewatson. Patrons also get exclusive access to private videos, custom 5e content, and participate in monthly DM roundtables and these Patreon D&D games. These games are not live streamed, but are recorded for your viewing pleasure. You can watch more sessions, reviews, and crafting streams on the channel and rate it recaps at roguewanson.com and listen to all these shows with the Rogue Watson podcast available wherever you get your podcasts. You can join our official Discord server with invite link in the description below. Our music is by Kevin McLeod and our amazing original character art was done by Jimmy McClure. Welcome to Chapter 4, Episode 6 of our Empire of the Ghouls campaign designed by Richard Green and published by Cobalt Press. This session I am joined by patrons Brandon playing Bond Me, the Cobalt Bard College of Whispers. Hey there. Christopher playing Rai, the Shadow Fey Black Powder Sorcerer. Hello. Corey playing Lucian, the Dampier Clockwork Soul Sorcerer. Hello. Dory playing Io, the Gear Forged Circle of the Moon Druid. Hello. And Stan playing Alaric, the Dampier Death Domain Cleric Slash Bard. Greetings. Previously on Empire of the Ghouls. The party descended the stairs beneath the Ilya family mausoleum. After solving a simple, he stuck. He sticks to it too. After solving a simple puzzle, they entered through a secret passage and down long hallways. Io spotted a pressure plate in the second hallway and warned the others. A swarm of screaming fire creatures came hurtling down the stairs, forcing a quick egress. Bon accidentally stepped on the trap, causing massive blades to slice out from the walls. Thankfully, the fiery creatures thought better than delving any deeper and broke off their pursuit. Deeper inside the tomb, the party found a recently dead body, blood still staining the ground, though its loot was left intact. They reached a large open chamber filled with sand and pillars and more humanoid remains. This time, jackal-headed creatures rose from the sand, defending the tomb with slashing claws and sandy whirlwinds. Lucian quickly shut them down with an effective confusion spell. A wraith rose from the remains, but hesitated in its attack, and introduced itself as Masudi Ilya, one of the brothers who originally trapped the evil ghoul king some time ago. He claimed that recent grave robbers awoke the king, and his power and influence are causing other undead to rise during the day and become violent. He asked that the party look out for his brother, who also lost his life when they were betrayed, and may be roaming these halls. Using Masudi's knowledge, the party avoided other dangerous areas and traps, and hurried to the church-like room to the north, where a set of stairs led down. A single zombie was spotted wandering around the room. Rai held back an attack, thinking it may be the brother, when another great sandstorm began manifesting right around them. We're going to jump right into some action. And you turn around, and Rakish is gone, but thankfully Stan is there. <laughs> Guys are kind of north slash to the uh, middle of the room, and I'm gonna go and ask for everybody to roll initiative. As uh, there does seem to be a hostile zombie in a destroyed chapel room, but more pressingly, also a large sandstorm has whipped up in this area. How does Bon always end up fifty feet ahead? <laughs> Charging ever forward. <laughs> so the sandstorm is in the same room as the zombie up ahead of us? Yes. it's It, it seemed to activate. It didn't activate when you all went in the room. But it seemed to activate when the zombie began a turn and started approaching you all. And nine. All right, and we're gonna start right. with 
Alaric having uh, caught up to the group now. Find yourself in the middle of this dungeon. Hey guys, I made sure no one was following us. Bond, <laughs> not again. <laughs> This is directed at the uh, zombie or Bon? Yeah, the right. zombie. <laughs> <laughs> you chastised uh, Bon and then cast Chill Touch, so I had to. I had to ask. It's, uh, it's reasonable, reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> you rolled a three, but uh, with your modifiers, that does make it a thirteen, and we know zombies have pretty low ACs. So that is going to hit the zombie. Wow. Zombie, how do you feel at necrotic damage? You hate necrotic damage. Yep. Zombie's necrotic damage personified. Um, and if he's resistant, it doesn't matter because I blow past that. Uh, no, it is not. It just, it mm -hmm. like rots even worse. Just okay. melting in front of you. Uh, Bon, you are in the sand zone. I would like for you to give me a dexterity saving throw as it is literally like just threatening to knock you off your feet and slam into you. Rolled a 7, but got a 16. 16 is enough to maintain your footing, although the sand uh, slices... Uh, I'll let you roll it. Give me 2d6. <laughs> Yikes. As, uh, it, it, it's, it feels similar to... When you oh nice roll, <laughs> you take ten <laughs> force damage. When you guys were out fighting uh, other undead creatures and a sandstorm magically manifested. In fact, it's done this several times to you all. Um, what's the level of vision? Is my vision obscured? I yes, you are heavily obscured, so it's kind of the. Uh, similar to a fog cloud, where it's literally just like, yeah. you know, and it's you can't hardly see. Is the wind whipping or anything? I should give a like disadvantage to Alaric, but he already rolled a three, so. <laughs> Do I feel like if I move, I'm gonna have trouble, or is that deck save keeping my footing? Uh, it's keeping your footing, but you would have difficult terrain moving. Okay. Uh, sorry, Rye. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Yeah. Um, and Alaric wouldn't know this unless you all told him. Bon may realize this as you step into this room. Oh, um, that's right. We were supposed to go through this room quickly, weren't we? You were supposed to go through this okay. room quickly. <laughs> okay. So Brandon forgot that as a player. As soon as you mentioned it, I remembered it. I guess I just hold my position then. I mean, um, you. I I kind of like it thematically. I'll, I'll say either way. As 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 Bond would. Would you react? Because um, yeah, it has obviously been that long for your character as been for us. Um, but would you try to es naturally try to escape from the sandstorm just into the nearest safe space, which would be that room? But no, your character. Not if I knew that we were encouraged to go through that room. Quickly. You don't know. Uh, you yeah. were never told why. Interestingly, yeah. he just said tr make it through that room quickly. Um, I think I'll just uh, hunker down uh, by one of these broken pillars because that's something Bond's been known to do. Also. Mm -hmm. is just kind of get down. Uh, I'm blinded though, so I can't see the zombie anymore either. Um, you could still. So, I, I would just do disadvantage for purposes, basically for attacking. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, vicious mockery. All they have to do is hear me anyway. Oh um, yeah. So I'll just do vicious mockery. You've we've done a couple of vicious mockeries with you, not looking at your target. Uh, wisdom save seventeen. Zombies are not pretty wise. That was actually a pretty good roll, but that That's zombie feels damage. sad. Zombie's taking a beating, but is still on its feet. You could say he feels rotten. Mm -hmm. Nice. Extra rotten. Alright. Io. Okay. 
Io is going to charge up and um, let me see how far away am I? Roughly, roughly 50 feet. Okay. Um, I'm going to pop myself into... Well, okay, here's an odd question. Mm -hmm. If I shifted into my giant elk form, could someone technically ride me? Like, I could be a mount for someone? I don't even think you have to be a giant elk for that. I think as long as your mount is one size larger mechanically, uh, okay. I think you can... Yeah, I think you can we ride did, another... We did that when you were... When you were a bear, we did that. Right. Okay. I just don't know how that, that would people. work once we're already <laughs> in combat. Uh, so I have not had to look up the mounted rules in a long, long time. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I would like, what I would love to do, my goal is, is I want to shift. I want to take somebody so I can get them safe passage either through or into that room. If it took my action, because shifting is a bonus action. Yeah. I, if it took my action to let those two clamor on, I you know I'd be okay with that. That's probably how I'd rule. My one concern is I'm not sure a giant elk could fit through these uh, five foot oh. passages. It's pretty tight. Isn't that a huge creature? Okay. Is a large creature? Oh yeah. Okay, so I'd have to go bear. All right. Yeah. That's still large. Well, yeah. large, so I would let you squeeze through five feet, on. but a huge would be, I think, a bridge too far. Okay. Mm. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm not going to change my token until the end of my turn. Um, so I'm going to move. Uh, Lucian, do you want do you want to ride in? Giant elk. Let me just double check. I think a giant elk is bigger. It is. All right. Yeah, giant elk is huge. So I'm going to say I'm shifting to bear. And then I'm moving through that room into the sand room with Lucian aboard. Okay. Um, if, if you're... I will, I will, yeah, As a, if you use your action, I will let you use your action to basically scoop up somebody and put them on, or even if you want to just bear cub them, pick them up by his throat or whatever. And... <laughs> <laughs> like a <Okay>. little kitten. <laughs> All right, so I've got 40 feet, so I'm going to so go bear limp. Like <laughs> just go limp. <laughs> like... <laughs> 35. Just ragdoll. Uh, we'll go 40 right here. Uh, well, because my token's going to make me bigger, so I'll move here. Yeah. So, Lucian, you can move yourself in there safely, and then once my turn is over, I'll shift my token. Where are you? Oh. Uh, come straight into the room and yeah, take a I right. Got it. I'm here. Okay. And then that'll be that'll be my turn. Alark is now certainly traumatized that a bear just went running past him and almost stopped. <laughs> I'm hearing, sorry. Hearing Lucian. You hear in your head, I'm sorry, I'll come back for you. <laughs> okay. Uh yes. Okay. Um sorry, I'm reading what Bond was saying. Is that uh vicious mockery requires sight? Yeah, sorry about that. I oh, okay. I think I was reading half of it. The half that applied. I but, guess uh, was it distant whispers we were using before all the time. Then I guess distant whispers is the one where you just have to. They only have to be able to hear you. Vicious mockery. You have to see and hear. Gotcha. All right. Uh, well, Lucian, you have been dragged into the sandstorm. Um, I need you to give me a deck. Are you actually riding the bear literally, or, or did the bear just kind of carry you in? Um, I would have scooped him up on my back, so... Yeah, I can run. Okay. Well, either way, give me a deck save. This will determine basically whether you're still on the bear or whether you're fall down prone. Just from being buffeted by the sandy winds. And then a... Uh, 
Regardless, a 2d6 for damage from the sandstorm. Okay, so you fall down off the bear and get slammed into the ground, knocking you prone. Uh, the damage is the same. It's that 2d6. You want to roll that for me for just the sand buffeting the area? Do I have a good sand? I do. Did I need to do that too, Eric? I didn't you know, I, I looked it up and it says when you start your turn. <laughs> so. Oh. It's, okay. yeah, it's just mechanically, it's only technically if you start your turn in the zone, you have to worry about it. There we go. I'll do some sand. Or, uh, windy sands. All right, Lucian. You are technically on, like, slammed into the ground prone right now. Um, heavily obscured, so and you would find it very difficult to concentrate on anything. Just fight. You were supposed to. Did I see the room uh, clear before the sandstorm picked up? Uh, mostly, yeah. You all kind of knew. I mean, I know the. I, I know the general direction. Yes. We're going, right? So, yes. Yeah. Um, so I'll use half my movement, stand up, and just start making my way over there. A difficult terrain. Right. Oh, yeah. So. I only get, what, five feet then? Yeah. <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah, that's where mainly the prone block. screws you up. I don't want to block anybody. Um, that's all right. I'll go there. That's five feet closer. So. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I mean, I could sh try to shoot at him, but be a disadvantage, right? Yeah. But it's a zombie. It just, yeah. So I'll do a mind sliver on it. That's just general direction. Oh, it's a save. Yeah, but so that is it. Does that mean you get advantage? I was going to say... Oh, I still I, have to see it. It says you have to see... I have to see it. Yeah. Oh, so I can't even cast it then. Yeah. Just, uh, I'll do then. I'll do... Uh, if you have an frost. attack roll spell, I'd let you do that with this advantage. Yeah, yeah, I'll do Ray of Frost. There you go. So you guys uh, are rolling like threes 13. and fours and still hitting a zombie. Come on. <laughs> 13. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, eight, eight cold. <clears throat> wow. Cold comes slicing through the sandstorm. All right, the zombie is still yeah. up, but now it's yeah. been buffeted by multiple blasts of magic. And I presume more is coming if we go to Rise turn. Yep. Do so you need a dex? Yes, dex save to avoid being prone, and then 2d6 for the damage from the sandstorm, please. And stays up. All right, only four. I don't usually right. do like any damage to Rai, so I'll count that as a win. <laughs> That's right. Um, all right, so uh, half movement, uh, so I can move 15 feet. So I'll move to there, which is about 10 feet, I think. And that puts me within range. And I'm going to cast um, Burning Hands. I haven't pulled that one out in a while. Yeah. And... <laughs> That's just like... <laughs> right, and I don't have to see them, so everything's cool. <laughs> just fan your hands in a general direction. So it's a... Dex save, 10 fire. Dex is not something the zombies create at. 
Nope. <laughs> Negative one. <laughs> For ten fire damage. So, Rai, you put your hands out, and again, it's just you're just trying to shoot it in that general area, and flames leap out and engulf the zombie who crumples uh, to the ground in a smoldering ruin. Uh, give me a perception check with disadvantage, please. Since, you know, the whole sandstorm thing. Eternal disadvantage. Perception, 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 number two. Fifteen. Uh, you think you see, now that the zombie has fallen onto the ground, that the space the zombie's in seems to be a bit more recessed from the rest of the floor tiles. Okay. I, uh, the storm is still going on, right? Yes, um, it is. All right, so I call that out, uh, you know, to the rest of the party within my that that can hear me within with the sandstorm going. You're probably having to yell, yeah. You're close by, yeah, but you're yeah. having to yell. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I yell that, and that's the the end of my turn. All right, the zombie is Dunzo. Um. Alaric, you are standing in the middle of this room of ornate rugs. Um, they mo mo mostly look dirty and tattered. And then as you stand there, you suddenly feel like a fluttering beneath you and you look up to or you look down to see one of the rugs kind of under a pile seems to undulate out of it and attempt to quickly wrap around you. Oh, pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I don't know if I've ever used this creature before, even though it seems to be a classic. He just wants to hug you. I know, I'm going to attack with advantage because that is a surprise. I don't know if a 19 hits you, though. 19 can hit me if I want it to. <laughs> Would you like to be hugged by a rug? Um, I would not like to be hugged with a rug in this room or any other room. Um, it's very dark. It is quite so. snug. <laughs> uh -huh. So I will prefer to be hugged by my shadows and feel warm and comfy and take my AC up to a 20. Okay. So thankfully you flip on your shadow aegis as this uh, carpet tries to wrap around you and instead it just wraps around your shadow and uh, you can feel it just pulsing for a second and it kind of has to flutter uh, back down. So, move it off to the side there. Uh, and then it is your turn. So you see you've got a rug now that looks like it was all up in your business and then although the zombie appears to be down in this room, it's hard to see. Uh, but it's hard to see because the sandstorm's still raging currently. Hmm... Um, not liking, uh, this thing being this close to me. Uh, I'm gonna bite the rug. <laughs> I don't think any of us expected that. Throwing your teeth, you're gonna tug it? Yeah. <laughs> tug the rug. I had a loose string there. Does a 12 hit the rug? Uh... A, a 12 does hit a rug, actually. You rolled a 2, and you still managed to chomp down on the rug with your teeth. Is it... Uh, how do I read this? Let's see. Oh, this is a spell you're using? Yeah, it's a, it's a cantrip. Let me... Um, yep. Yeah. So it hit, it takes... Um, should be 2d8... Uh, uh, necrotic damage. It did roll 2d8, I'm sorry to say. You rolled 2s on both your d8s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a humanoid, so I don't get the temporary hit points. It is not. So, it is a Ruganoid. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
and it is very broke. offended. It, it takes a tassel and it's like, how dare! <laughs> It's very smug. It's like slapping uh, you away. It's a smug rug. All okay. Right. We have fun. Um, and I'll just take <laughs> one step forward. I think of forward. as Aladdin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what everybody thinks about when they have this animate rug. Which, by the way, and kind of the away. MVP of the finale of Aladdin. He would have been up shit creek without a paddle. Because <laughs> Jafar sends his to the ends of the earth. And he's got nothing. He just would have died out there. But they're like, oh, no, you teleported my magic carpet who can actually travel over any distance in no time at all. No. Bon, I need a deck save. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers, sorry. <laughs> For 1992's <laughs> Disney's Aladdin. <laughs> uh, the real MVP. Look at you, staying on your feet and only taking three... Damage from sand. Vaughn is never going to come back to the desert ever again. Yeah. Uh, we have a tapestry scary. situation back here. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, why does this suck so bad? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think at this point, now that he's taken damage twice, now he is going to come 5, 10, 15, 20. Do you 20, want the sand room or the carpet room? Uh, I'll take the carpet room. And... We'll do... You may notice suspicious bite marks on the rug. <laughs> There's a little <laughs> hole, like a little frayed hole. Oh man, I can't even do that. Why is this so difficult? I'm gonna... Th do you want to insult the rug? Dude, <laughs> cheap <laughs> imitation knockoff. I think I'm gonna throw You're not a double threaded. I'm gonna throw a dagger at it. <laughs> Put you in a jug. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Chris one. Uh or CT one. I'm gonna uh I'll go ahead and vicious mockery. Threaten to put it in a You jug. are gonna mock the rug, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, the mu oh, it's, it's wisdom is so bad. I will shove you so far into this jug. <laughs> <laughs> it just it like vibrates with anger, just shaking. <laughs> uh, and he's uh, the, actually he's like, wait, how bad does it smother? Maybe I can wrap it around myself and I'm, make it through the sand. I'm pleased to report that it is immune to psychic damage, but it's still angry at you. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> uh, okay. Do you know my turn? Yeah. You, 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 it was a very nice uh, mockery of the rug, though, all things considered. Uh, Barrow! Give me a deck save and 2d6 force damage. Uh, you are knocked prone. By the sand. <laughs> Unbelievable. 2d6. Unbearable. Unbearable. Yes. And I take nine damage from it? <laughs> yes, you do. Like what? Winnie the Pooh getting knocked backwards? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Baba. <laughs> nine damage. Wow. My youngest has gotten really into Winnie the Pooh lately, too. Classic. So, my movement is 40 feet, so it takes me 20 to get up, which means I can only move 10 feet. That is correct. The sand sucks. Well, that totally does not help, because I had a plan, and now that plan has gone to shit. <laughs> so, I'm going to move ahead. Whoops. And, uh, can I use, I wanted to try to get to where the zombie was to see if that indentation was like a hole or maybe him being in that spot was causing <laughs> the storm. Can uh, I use my action to dash there? You can use your action to dash try there. To, yeah. like, I wanted to try to like shove him with sure. my snout. Okay. Just be a. So I want to get up here. Snowplow. Next to him. Through the sandstorm. Yeah, storm. basically. 
gets and to I, tell me. My goal was to try to shove him to see if that, if him being in that area is what ca was causing the storm. Sure. And it's a dead body, so you don't have to roll any kind of check to charge okay. into it. And if you're using your action to dash, then you would have enough movement um, to just kind of turn on the jets and just push through and knock it off. And what you determine is uh, you move forward and knock it forward, I assume. And then you look down and see that the space that the body was in looked like a pressure plate. Like a giant pressure plate. I'll presume you are also not wanting to end up on that space. Or maybe you are. Correct. Okay. Nope. So you pull off of it and you see that plate start to rise. It doesn't click up immediately, but it starts rising. It looks like it would take a couple seconds. <laughs> okay. I would, in my head, kind of communicate that out to everyone. Um, just kind of stay away from that area. Yep. And that's the end of my turn. So last time I was yelling, but we're still all mic'd up, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it could be fun to yell. <laughs> Sometimes it's I'm yelling mic. really loud into the mic. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's naturally yelling the sandstorm, even if you're mic'd up. I think uh, Lucian, deck save and two d six force damage, please. Ouch! You are falling down. I don't know what's happening in either direction. Uh, <laughs> I think Allard just said there was a, ta see. a quote, a quote tapestry situation. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, Can you only move five feet again? If I stand up, I could, I could, uh, <laughs> I, could crawl. I could only crawl there. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, drop, and roll. Uh, But then Bond's there. Oh, I can't do anything. Um, Just shove him out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Throw him back into the sandstorm. <laughs> Switch places with him. <laughs> um, that was as far as I could move. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. No, you're okay. I don't want to go into the carpet. Um... <laughs> It's never good when you're called into the car until the carpet. Mm -hmm. It's an angry carpet, dude. Ah, boy. Uh, I. I mean, uh, I can't really see through. Okay, I'll. Okay, I'll stand up. All I can do is move five feet, though. I, I don't want to block anybody. I'll just I'll I'll move I'll I'll move forward. Because I didn't see what Io did. I had the, I think I had the same idea of yeah. moving the zombie. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see now that everybody's kind of focused on this point. You can see this plate that the zombie was on is a is a discolored, slightly discolored area from the rest, and it appears to now be rising back up to be level with the floor. I'm done. I definitely misunderstood when you said depression. I was thinking it was like a like a bowl type thing that would indicate that the ground's going to give way the moment weight gets like more weight gets put on uh, it. Okay. No, sorry. I was describing it like a pressure plate that was uh, pressed in basically, and now it's coming yeah. back up. Yeah. Uh, right. Deck save and force damage. Everybody's favorite sandstorm. You stay up. Uh, let's see. Is it 2d6? Yeah. Everybody's doing it. You need to just join the crowd. I don't know. I don't know. Ooh. I should, I should, I should that, that is some nasty <laughs> sand. You are getting all up in your mouth. Yeah. My mouth was open and everything. Yeah. <laughs> why, why was my mouth open? <laughs> There's sand everywhere. That's my favorite line from Shrek. <laughs> um, okay, Bob's still up. Uh... So I'm gonna head in that direction and also get closer. 
let's see, one, two, he went investigating. three, but not stand on the pressure plate. Yeah. I hope and... I hope they don't slap you so hard. <laughs> and and I'll stop there looking around to see if I see any other threats that yeah. I couldn't see before. Uh, it doesn't appear to be anything in the moment, and in fact, at the end of the round, the uh, plate finally clicks back up, and the sandstorm finally just dissipates, and it, it's all very, you know, unnatural and sudden. It's just raging at one point, and then all of a sudden, just like something clicks off, and all the sand just falls gently, kind of coats everything again. You do see a uh, spiral staircase that goes... Um, which way does it go, Chris? It's an up staircase, right? No, it's a, it's a it goes down actually. It's down. Uh, this rug is very angry now. Uh, it's gonna try to go after Alaric because Alaric bit it. Fortunately, no advantage. And a nine is not gonna cut it from the rug. The rug. Not, not gonna the rug. cut. Thank you. What was I trying to say? <laughs> not gonna cut it. <laughs> cut the rug. Something to do with dancing, right? Uh, but it's trying to weave and slap you and grab onto you, and you are pivoting away, Mr. Alaric. Okay. Um, <laughs> the rug's got follow its it. tassels out like just <laughs> mysticals now. It's getting into battle stances. <laughs> so to uh, follow up on what Bond did and this vicious mockery, we're going to add insult to injury for this rug. And we're going to hit it with some carpet beetles. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's the worst thing you can do to a rug. The uh -huh. infestation. <laughs> or I should say conjure scarab swarms, since yeah. infestation is actually another spell. Yep. Oh, yep. So I need uh, two of okay. my uh, beetle swarms, please. I like to put one behind, um, put them one there and then one behind him. Yep, perfect. Oh, the beetles. Okay, I they get their, can... they get their own they get their own initiative. Oh so. yeah, do I need to do that or do you do that? I forget. Um, I can do that. I think. a little dice icon yep took a minute i haven't i haven't conjured my beetles in a while mm -hmm. so okay and that will end my turn all right bond there's sand everywhere <laughs> um <clears throat> i'm gonna stand up and stand Dab it with my rapier. And I'm going to use. Yeah, 19. Um, psychic blades. I, I did. I did tell you. Oh, yeah, you did. It's okay. I'm still going to burn it. I'm, I'm angry. <laughs> I'm hurt. But, so 11 piercing damage. I'm so angry. He is offended. Yeah. To you, it does great work, though, because it stabs the rug, the rug like shutters, and you're just like, yeah! I almost feel like this rug would take psychic damage because it's just so offended now. Uh, it's looking pretty tattered for a rug. I think that's all I'm going to do. I think I'm going to hold my position there still. So Alaric can. Pull me out when I go down. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Obear. No more threats in the chapel, but you sense you're still in turn based combat mode. And I muted. Um, so I hear a ruckus obviously coming from that other room. And your character, um, like I, like I told Brandon, uh, would recall a warning you don't know what the warning was but the warning was don't linger in the carpet room basically right right so i'm gonna come back 
um, to hear and just getting close to this hallway, can I even get in there to help them is the question. How much movement do you have? Because it's pretty crowded in that hallway. I have 20 more feet. Wait, 5, 10, 15. I have 20 more feet. So I would count every five foot square you'd have to pass through is difficult terrain. And then this one, so that'd be 5, 10, 15. I'm going to say no because of Alaric and Bond being right here at the opening also for squeezing purposes. Now you could dash uh, to use more movement to get in there, but then uh, you can't see what I see, but like it would be points. actually really tricky for your bear to maneuver in. That, that carpet room was very small. You squeezed and charged your way through it, but it's Okay, so course. what I'm gonna do, um, what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna I'm gonna stay there, and I'm gonna hold my action in case um, I can attack anything that comes within proximity of me. Okay, but I'll be there also in case I need to help, like grab somebody, pull them out, or something. So that's my turn. Solution. So the room we're in, we we were told not to linger in, that I am in currently. Oh, the room. The room. The, the room, room before that. In. The room down here. They were the room they are in. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, oh, can I? Uh, if I go there, it's going to get an attack of opportunity. Um. If I go there, I can see a sliver of it. Can I? Would you allow me to hit it? Sure. Yeah, it's a big road. Oh, um, yeah, I'll, uh... it's flapping around. Um, did we skip the? Did do the oh, the Beatles skipping. didn't get to go. The Beatles didn't get to go. Yeah, I'm not sure oh. why. Uh, go ahead, go ahead and take your turn, Lucian. Then we'll do the Beatles. You sure? Okay. Um. The initiative didn't get ordered properly when they got rolled. So, um, <laughs> wonder. Now nah, I'll just hit it with a ray of frost. Mm -hmm. Let's just fifteen. I believe you said that hit yes. eleven cold. Eleven cold. Ooh, that frog just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still up, but now it is all. Uh, oh, it's getting like wet now too. That's not great. <laughs> Nobody likes a wet. Ooh, was it shag? That's <laughs> so Let's nasty. Uh, it is still. I don't even know how to describe it. It's living, it animated. <laughs> it's still up, but looks even worse for wear. So much. Wear and tear. All right, now we can do the uh, Beatles, Alaric. Twelve does in a rug, as we've determined. And Beatle two. Uh, Eleven does not. Congrats, you found its AC. <laughs> For ten. Oh boy. Beetles just swarming all over it, biting, just tearing more open holes into it. That rug is now... Now it looks like the rug is just shivering and uh, in the death throes. Uh, technically, it is still animated. Even with beetles crawling over it. Rye from downtown. Alright, so he's gonna move one more get a nice good shot on it. Feels bad that it's cold. Oh, uh, and it's got a firebolt. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the cold fire treatment. Yeah, twenty-one for well fire damage. Uh, once again, Rye with the kill. Just fire comes swimming to the room and just blows up that poor rug. It wasn't an outdoor rug. Couldn't handle the season change. It, no, that was pretty violent season change, too. Jeez. Very flammable. One, one, two. 
and that appears to be the only deadly rug in the area. <laughs> Thankfully. Uh, Alaric will open up his cloak and let his beetles climb up and mine the inside of his cloak. <laughs> so and, take, and take them and take them with him. Nice. So You know, I'm really looking forward to whatever's down below if we've been encountering so much stuff here. I'm sure it's just going to be a cakewalk. That's right. It gets easier as you go lower. <laughs> That's generally how it works. Can I inspect the altar? Yes. Um, the whole chapel looks like this was you know, once the centerpiece of this mausoleum, it looks like it was the place, the main place of worship. Um, you know, there's uh, some hieroglyphics and murals along the walls, but this room especially has seen a lot of wear and tear, and you surmise it's because of this uh, sand trap that has been placed here, and like all the pews have been crushed and worn, and uh, the altar, even the stone altar has been just worn away and chipped, and there's just a lot of damage in this room. Everything appears to be um, pretty destroyed, and there doesn't appear to be anything of value or anything worth inspecting in this room either. Um, the zombie uh, looks like it is more recent um, and bears similar attire and style to the very first dead body you found which had the uh was near the hole uh, the trapped hallway running back and still had treasure on it this one does not appear to have any treasure on it however was that like that was part of masubi's like party wasn't it the, so the you're starting to put together some pieces now. Masudi does say that he and his brother trapped the Ghoul King initially with a group that they hired, and then the group ultimately betrayed them, and basically everybody yeah. died. Very good horror movie setup. Um, but then he said another group of Tomb Raiders came in some determinate time later and apparently uh, freed the ghoul king and that's what's been causing all the the problems lately so he's blaming a lot of this on these recent uh tomb robbers or raiders whatever and um now you're seeing what, what his like body and stuff was like very decomposed and his dress was much older and now you're seeing these ones that doesn't seem to be the case these are much fresher undead uh that maybe were part of that original or not the original but the more recent tomb raider party that actually caused the the problems on kicks him on his way past him. Uh, it appears to be a female zombie. Um, also, you notice that the sandstorm didn't seem to be affecting the zombie whatsoever, which was disconcerting. The zombie appeared, it's fully corporeal. Yeah, and the sandstorm is obviously very real. You felt that, but you just there's some kind of relationship here where like the sand doesn't be fucking with the undead, only with you guys. Great. <laughs> Does it appear that I'm going to be able to make it down the stairs in bear form? Or do I need to shift back? You look down the stairs and it looks pretty dangerous for you to try to go down in bear form, I'll be honest. Okay. It looks like it plunges down into darkness also. This does not look like you can see, like, oh, it's just a few, you know, steps and then we're there. This looks like it is a plunging, nasty staircase. Going backwards. Do, do the beetles light up like a uh, light lightning bug? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> They're not fire beetles. Oh, I still think they go first. <laughs> if you if we want someone to go first, I can bring. A, we can make a new friend. Vaughn walks down the stairs. The carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Bond works down the stairs. Can you see in the dark? Bond, yeah, death wish. Can, um, yeah, I, I and, and, and yeah. this level has been uh, dimly lit by continual flame spells, which appear to be literally dimming because they're so old. Uh, you look down there, you don't see any light. Uh, 
I'll think through the <clears throat> communication thing. Uh, uh, Io, you're not going to be able to see. Um, I yeah, will I'll cast, cast light on. Oh, yeah, okay. On something. Uh, my staff. On your staff. Yeah. Okay. So you start lighting up. Am I the oh, only one that doesn't have dark vision in the group? Cool. Yeah. I think we have to remember this every every time. Yeah. <laughs> yep, everybody gets dark vision these days. Alaric will put his hand on Bon and um, cast Death Ward. Ooh. Wait, don't I have one on me? You do. I think, I think I've got one on me. No, wait. You do? No, you yeah, That's protection from evil and good. Protection from evil and good. Okay, cool. I need yeah. to make a note. Death wards. Mm -hmm. Target grenade major protection from death. First time a target will drop to zero hit points as resulting in damage. The target instead drops to one hit point and the spell ends. Okay. Let me see how long that lasts. What's this strange, invincible feeling? <laughs> <laughs> I think I walked in that blade of all again just for fuzzies. <laughs> <laughs> My spell only lasts for 10 minutes, so I don't know if that would have been okay, so it's gone. diminished yeah. by now. Uh, when did Bond, you... I, don't, I don't want to cast any more healing spells today. <laughs> I cast that on Bond when we were back with Masudi. I, yeah. I think. I'm pretty sure that conversation took 10 minutes. That's probably expired just, right yeah. now, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, so... I, 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 I'm happy to go first and try to scout if, as long as oh, yeah, I can no, bon, see now. Bond's definitely already walking down the stairs. Like that's when it was okay. dark, he had said, um, that you won't be able to see. And part of it's because Bond's lighter than all of you. Um, except for maybe Rai. Uh, and so if the stairs give way, like he's got a better chance to get down before <laughs> everybody else. The old up. stairs in the slide trap. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> waiting for it. <laughs> Then I will go last then, because obviously I have the heftiest weight out of everyone in the group. And Alaric's going to try to keep an eye on Bond. You kill us when you land. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Alaric's going to try to keep, keep an eye on Bond and go second. Okay. Yeah, you guys descend these stairs for a unnerving amount of time, and it is just a tight central spare staircase that is uh continuing continuing to wind down it's an up staircase right no go away chris uh you're going down into just pitch darkness but you know you have dark vision so it's and uh you put your light source at the very back is <laughs> uh uh io is is lighting the way although she's back up ahead of you all you feel like you're going down like several stories probably worth going down into this next level uh, you emerge finally into a very large open chamber that is looks like a construction site almost. There's chunks of rubble of various sizes strewn about, and the floor is like cracked and broken in various spots. It feels like a a, a demo. Uh, like like my backyard was a couple weeks ago. <laughs> just pure demolition work everywhere. Uh, just giant chunks of rocks and stuff. And a very large round chamber. You do see in the distance a exit uh, towards the uh, towards the south. Whisper to Bond. Do you think we can uh, sneak across this? Yeah. Well, watch the step. Sneaky, sneaky. I watch the floor. Bon says, Shh, stop making so much noise. <laughs> Some good self checks, too. Not bad for a cleric and a bard. As you two step into this room, you fall 
the entire world turns upside down and you fall to the ceiling and all of the rocks around you, all of the rubble and destruction just falls all at once. And I'm going to need some dexterity saving throws to avoid the rocks because you're still taking the falling damage as you're slamming into the ceiling 30 feet above you. Is that right? Is it 3d6? Yeah, so you're both taking 3d6 falling damage, but you also need to make a deck save to avoid the flying rocks everywhere. Oh, wait, I thought I did. Sorry. Yeah, yeah they no, did. I did. Oh, you did. Sorry. Yeah, 27 and 22 are great deck saves. Uh, both of you managed to avoid the terrifying flying rocks that uh, just choo, 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 just all of a sudden as you slam and you look and now you're pinned to the ceiling and you can see the ceiling has the same destruction that the floor has. It's all cracked and broken all over the ceiling. And... I think I'm going to go ahead and put you guys into initiative, actually. Let's do that. Keep things organized. Uh, those of you on the staircase don't feel that, but you see it <laughs> happening see in front of you. Past you. <laughs> and it is a hell of a trip. Yeah, it happens like in like a second. Like suddenly, it's, it's literally as if somebody just reversed gravity and all of a sudden just everybody, everything flew out of that room towards the ceiling. So let's have everybody roll for initiatives. So we can keep this organized. <laughs> hmm. Well, there went my string of twenty somethings. Hmm. Um, I think it's been what ten minutes now since we left the other room. Uh, it's probably not well, since you the left the other room. Uh, yeah, I mean, you you mm -hmm. went down the stairs for a while, but I'd, I'd say the 10 minutes has not ended yet. Okay. Um, if you want to track all your beetles getting slammed to the ceiling. Yeah. Um, <laughs> command them to go behind you. Yeah. I need to, I'm keeping I need to, them in my cloak, so. You mean to put them on the map to make it easy to track? Uh, I'm just. They, I can. They might get slammed all to hell right here, though. Yep. All right. So failing the deck save means you take another. They each take another three d six from the rocks. So the first one takes eighteen, and the second one takes nineteen. <laughs> There's just like beetle bodies everywhere. <laughs> all you hear is crunching oh. when I hit the ceiling. The beetles become additional projectiles. Uh huh. <laughs> um, yeah, they're down to uh, three and four hit point swarms. <laughs> uh, bon, I need a as you start your turn a strength saving throw as you literally feel. Yourself being pushed up into the ceiling. Nine. Which is not Bond's strong suit. Uh, please roll 2d4 force damage as you feel the pre like the g-force, I guess, of the trap pushing you into the ceiling. I have two current hit points. Yeah, he's feeling great. <gasps> uh, now you may take your turn. Difficult terrain, is it like... Oh, yeah. It's Extra very difficult. Or something? Is that what... Yeah, you're feeling pressed up against the ceiling. But more than that, it's actually, it's probably just like the the terrain was already going to be difficult. There's just shit everywhere, right? It's like walking in a construction site or something. There's just, you're having to kind of watch your step and there's rocks and things. It's the same thing you're looking at on the bottom now is on the ceiling. And then you're also feeling extra pressure, like the opposite of being on the moon or something. You know, it's like just, just like walking through water almost. Okay, I'm gonna dash five ten, 
15, 20. I'm like scrambling and okay. trying to parkour over stuff. Running along the ceiling, like sure. 15, 20, 25, 30. Do I fall back down here? If you hit the entryway, yes. And I imagine it's got to be the most terrifying feeling in the world because I don't know what that's like. And very few people do outside of like astronauts, I guess. Where you literally feel like maybe if you're on a roller coaster, I guess you'd feel equivalent, but it kind of feels like that feeling. Your stomach just lurches, and all of a sudden, you instantly you're running, and then the gravity just flips again for you, and you get to fall and take another 3d6 falling damage. But there's no debris this time. Uh, I Death take ward. Hit points, but I but I go down to one hit point instead of two hit points. Yes, because of death ward. Because of death ward. Yes, you slam to the ground as a puddle, but then a little bit of magic, like kind of knits your last damage together. Yeah, that's the here. fastest I've <laughs> ever seen death ward used. I was just thinking, like I was thinking, like, oh, it's a good use of death ward right there. <laughs> that is the fastest I've ever used, seen that spell used. <laughs> play play more games with me. Um, <laughs> okay yeah so so but i mean like this spot right here is enough that right there is when you felt gravity change okay. when you left the yeah. circular room uh i'm fine to have dashed to that point i'm assuming i'm prone um at this point yeah so. when you fall yeah for sure oh well i, I well, guess i, I could... can technically use the rest of the half of my movement to stand up so i'll do that so okay. i'm not and Vaughn, you hear the sound of voices and hisses and claw scratching in this next room. <laughs> it's like Vaughn God says, damn it. This communication <laughs> thing. He goes, I'm really thinking a new Akma could just have this shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see my turn. Well, the good news is you're not on the ceiling anymore. Uh, Io, you're just in the stairs. Actually, okay, we have the so same I... initiative. Oh, you're right. You, yeah, you, you guys can choose. Do you mind if I go first? I don't. <laughs> I just tap you. It's like, do you mind? <laughs> and when I tap you, I vortex warp you next to Bond in the other room. Ooh, cast that spell. Let's see it. I can't vortex warp self. What a fun so spot. I vortex warp. Another creature you can see within range. The target can choose to fail. Target is teleported. Okay. Occupied space of your space of your choice. You can see within range. Yeah, just a teleport of another person. And then I'll tap you, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then Lucian looks around and says, "Oh crap." <laughs> Tell <laughs> you to um, wait. <laughs> so I end up. How far do you move me? Right there, you think? Yep. At which point, Bond's okay. like his butts against the wall and his hands are on his knees. Yeah. <laughs> He's like just. Huh, oh. <laughs> And Io just oh, appears uh, like <laughs> in perfect serenity, just, no damage whatsoever. <laughs> just a little bit of light dusting. <laughs> it's just a bloody, uh, broken mess. <laughs> so, Bond, do, I, do I know if? Do I know? If, I'm sorry. Do I know if Bond has any like healing potions or anything? Uh. Because I do have a potion of greater healing um, that I give to Io before <laughs> I burst you are slip, dark. slip it into her pocket. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I think like I keep burning you are stone. And then I warp her over next to Bond with a potion of greater healing to I, deliver. And a sticky yeah, note. A sticky note. Work, <laughs> just like yeah. give this to Bond. Yeah. Do, Io, do okay. you do you consent to being teleported? Because it is something you have to choose to fail. Yeah. So that actually, I was going to do something different to try to get Alaric off the ceiling. But if I'm over there, that frees up my turn to either cure Bon or is it my action to give him that potion? Or uh, I think we actually have a rule for that. It well, is to administer it, but I don't think you're gonna. 
think it'll bonus. have a minister. It says right. potions can be given to others during combat as a bonus action within five feet, and then they must still drink it themselves. So as a bonus action, you can give someone uh. a potion. If you administer it to somebody, okay. it's a full action. Okay. And then... You can put it down on the ground for free. That's a good point. <laughs> and hope it doesn't fly Just pull it back Just out of dropping it right in front of him like a gangster sad. move. Like, fucking drink this. <laughs> um, it just shatters in front of him. Yeah, I think... Now that I'm here, I'm over here with Bon. Like, you have one hit point, correct? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. He's, he looks and I, so... How much healing is he going to get from what did you give him a greater? Yeah. Which is what? I think it's a 4d4. So not a ton. 4d4 plus 4 sounds right. Okay. I'm going to use my action to cast cure wounds <clears throat> on him. You can always give it back oh. to me. Like, you know. <laughs> he might need both if he's only got one hit point. Um, yeah, just all right. <laughs> wait till I get out again. <laughs> Bond's like, let me die. <laughs> this campaign is called Saving Bond. <laughs> saving, saving, saving Private, private Bond. Private yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds at second level. Give him some juice here. Okay. Do you have eleven healing? Thank you. From that, fourteen. And then like you also, it. oh yeah, yeah, I cast it at at second level. Oh, oh, sorry, fourteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Duh. I can't even read my own spell. So fourteen healing. Um, okay. and mm -hmm. yeah, if I can, like, it, I really want to do is my bonus action to shape. So that I could kind of create a barrier of defense against what is in this room. I turn into wall of bear. Wall of bear, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, you. So this room, um, I guess, needs to read the description. I, I wasn't expecting to go to this room so quickly, but I love it. Uh, the floor of this large chamber is heavily worn, and a large defaced jackal statue stands in each corner. In addition to a wide corridor opening on the south wall. There are doors on the east and west walls, and uh, I described the sounds for Bond, but Io, you actually have vision, and you are projecting light magically, which is certainly bringing the attention to what appears to be two, a pair of ghoulish creatures kind of clawing and scratching at the eastern door, now beginning to turn their attention towards the uh, the lit up gear forged, casting healing spells in the hallway. Okay. Well, the lit up gear forge is going to become a lit up bear. So I'm going to move forward out of the doorway in anticipation <laughs> that bear. my uh, my comrades will be joining me soon. Um, I could I could have dropped that potion on the ground by Bon, right? You can, yeah. Since I don't have okay, um, and then I'm going to just shape. So that's everything. Bonus action, action move, all of it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to wild shape into bear. So I love it. That's that so is cool the end of my stuff. turn. Yeah. All right. And then yeah, Rai did the vortex warp. Yep. Did you want to move, Rai, or do you want to stay in the staircase? Uh, yeah, I guess I will start moving as far as I can. Uh, but as soon as I go uh, out, no. I go up, right? Uh, yeah, from, from what you've seen, and you can even... I don't, I don't know if you can feel gravity? So, That's kind of a fucked up thing to say. <laughs> no, but I, but I watch what happened. Like, I should... Yes, you would you know, know... Get advantage, because I, I, I'm, I'm preparing myself Spider-Man-wise. <laughs> Spider-Man-wise. Spider I'm preparing, preparing. My, superhero my superhero landing. Well, okay, so I will say, because you're... you're not in it right now, but you know it exists. So you're thinking, okay, you're like looking up and be like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a step. I'm gonna like twist around and try to like land on my feet, basically. Then uh, I will, I will give you a dex save to avoid some of the falling damage, um, because you're starting at 
a point where you can kind of see everything and there's no flying debris at the moment. Everything's just stuck to the ceiling. So I would go, how far would I make it before my feet start lifting off? So you take a step. This is very cool. Like, uh, kind of near the end of, uh, the last crusade where you're like taking a leap step forward. Uh, you take a, a step on the first step that the stairs meet this floor and nothing happens. It, it, it's normal. And this step appears to be not as fucked up as the rest of it. And then as you take another step, presumably like just, I don't know what direction you want to go in towards the yeah, uh, of exit course. room. Yeah. yeah. As you take that step, then you immediately feel the effects and it flips okay. you around. Did you say advantage? I will give you a... You know what? I'm not going to give you advantage. I will allow you to make a deck save because normally you don't even get a deck save here. <laughs> oh, fair enough. So, fuck, that's a good deck save. Uh, give me 3d6, but I'll let you do half damage. Because you're still falling right. 30 fucking feet. <laughs> Six. Yeah. Thank you. So because you were mentally, prepare, physically preparing yourself and rolled a dirty 20, uh, is that a little bit of bruising. Still movement or that's it? So you still have your movement, but now you feel with the gravity pressure and you on the ceiling, it's difficult terrain here now. So if I'm 10, so that means I can go 10 more. Checks out. So one. Yep. So you are still in the ceiling zone. <laughs> was Lucian that like was... preparing Dimension Door or something? That'd be amazing. I was going to, yeah. Like, just as, He's yeah. Like, like, no. It wasn't like my turn, on, so I didn't, yeah. yeah. up. <laughs> I, I didn't want to. <laughs> I like that you, you prepare that, you turn around to like, all right, Rye, and Rye's like, just fucking <laughs> jump. <laughs> Walk down the go. stairs. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a 100 feet from... I'm a hundred feet from Bond at the moment, right? It's thir uh, the the ceiling is thirty feet high, right? And I'm ten feet over, so ten square plus. Oh lord, do squared. not do not make me get out the fucking Pythagorean you're, theorems. You're, you're, I'm not you're squared, which is which is hundred. <laughs> yeah, sure. You're, you're fifteen. You're fifteen feet from him. Okay. I have I have no idea how that works. <laughs> yeah. All right. Al turns to Ryan and goes, "That's a pretty cool idea. I think I could have done." something similar why are you next to me <laughs> uh, wall of bear is going to attract the attention of uh these ghoulish creatures which come loping at you uh io and attempts to claw at you oh yep 12 does hit the io bear yeah bear has a low ac Ooh, how about 12 slashing and a con save to avoid that good old ghoulization paralyze? Okay, 12 slashing. <laughs> and as this thing rakes at you with its long claws, you note that it also has a few tattered... Nice con save. A few tattered remains of its dress and style look similar to the zombie and that other body. Both of them. Okay. Technically, that should have been one more because my con, it should have... Nope, never mind. Ignore that. It does the bear's con. I'm, I'm an idiot. Oh, yeah, because you're a bear. Good. Yeah. Uh, Lucian, the only one now on the staircase. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over. <laughs> the water's fine. Yeah, Ryan's um, like, this was fucking fun. Let's want to do this again. <laughs> Wee. Yeah, <I> just... I... <laughs> Would I know how light works through this if I try to... Yeah, you become an astronaut. Somehow, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're getting you start, doing, we start playing some David thing. fucking <laughs> Bowie in here. <laughs> Ground control to mage illusion. <laughs> um, now that Rye left, I have a different plan. Uh, give me an Arcana check. You're used to those uh, chrono. Contingencies. 
Yeah, it's first number 17. Double checking, hang on. <laughs> um, it's <laughs> obviously magical, this room. Um, you think, based on your experience with magic, I'll only have a plus one arcana check. Um, um, but you think that a magical yeah. flight would operate actually fine, even though gravity is reversed and it would be disorienting for you to fly in that way. Um, it would... If you're flying, you don't think you would be uh, falling. So... Now, if the debris were, if you were in the middle of it while it was reversing and had debris flying everywhere, that would be a whole nother situation to deal with, with flying. But since all, everything appears to be stuck to the ceiling at the moment, um, based on your magical acumen of the situation, you think that a magical flight, you'd be able to fly. It would be weird because you're, you know, your uh, Y axis would be uh, opposite. Your, your controller would be flipped, but... Yes. Uh, you think that the, like the flight would make it in there? Yeah, I always got to make sure it's flight controls yeah. with actual um, uh, flying. Flight simulator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so I am going to cast with a using a sorcery point for distant um, meta magic. I will upcast it to. Fourth level spell fly, so I can target a second creature, and I'll get uh, Alaric this time. It was eeny meeny miny moe there, right? So sorry. <laughs> this is new. Yeah. No. Oh, we did see Rai purposely me. try to go into it. So you're <laughs> like, he already does. Yeah, that. right. Right. Clearly, he's like into this. <laughs> This was like uh this was on your bucket list or something. <laughs> base like base jumping. Yeah. I did the math. I am twenty feet from Boston. <laughs> he did the math. <laughs> Square root of four hundred. Thank goodness. Flying speed of sixty. Forty forty five. Eight. Soaring through the and again, Lucian, it is freaky. You, I mean, you don't probably fly very often in general, right? I don't actually see you use that <laughs> spell very often. But now try flying when gravity is reversed. So suddenly, literally, it's like playing a video game where your 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 settings are are the opposite of what you're used to, and you're just like, oh fuck, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> you see him just flying around like he's drunk or something. But you do make it through. There's no oh, flying debris in the way. Can I use my full movement, or will the loop-de-loops throw me off? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll let you use your full movement. I think it's just for flavor, but yeah. Okay. All, right. All right, so that's my 60 feet. I'm still uh, up. I, yeah. Yeah, so this chamber is only about uh, uh, 10 feet high, I think. So like a normal room, basically, whereas the other one was this huge, vast, like, dome thing. I'm going to put a All right. wing thing so I can remember. Assuming you're staying like near the ceiling or something. Yeah. That's why I backed off a little bit. Give me. I used the distance to get up to. So. Yep. That's a pretty cool spell because you could have uh, you and me like flying around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they're learning more tactics. <laughs> Just, that would be cool. Yeah, just doing strafing runs, laser beams. Just <laughs> hot cold, hot cold. <laughs> <laughs> we get that creature from the last room. We could carpet bomb. Oh more, man! More. Where is that soundboard? Yeah. Where is that? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. For that. Uh, no, I will give, uh, you and Rye and 
IO inspiration because all of you were like directly supporting somebody else to these events. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Excellent. Sweet. Uh, Alaric, I need you to give, or no, you are, uh, flying, so, uh, I'm gonna say you do not have to make the strength saving from being pressed up by the gravity. Instead, you feel mm -hmm. a, you feel a weightlessness, but yeah. Alaric, it is so fucking weird to feel weightless, but again, the same description where you're, like, slightly off of the ceiling, and that's down to you, is the ceiling. Um, my two beetle swarms are now squished. You just hear the sickling. Yeah. As they get pressed up against the ceiling. Um, and realizing that I can fly now. He can fly. I will, try, I, will, I will take my cloak, will turn into the wings. Oh, shit. I will drop the mask. Motherfucking Batman. This is what I've, al this is what I've always wanted. <laughs> oh, my God. I have, I, have, I have become deaf. This is amazing. <laughs> it's like Darkwing Duck. <laughs> you I have, you have created a monster. In the night. I have... Created a monster. I am the beetle that infests your rug. <laughs> and I will drop down and take a rapier swing at nice. uh, this thing. I'm messing will, with my friend. I'll give you advantage on this attack, uh, Alaric, for dropping in very dramatically. And 22 does hit. Four, seven. Dabbing. It looks like a... It looks like a ghoul, but it looks a little stronger than the average ghoul. I will refrain from using my uh, channel divinity on it. Okay. Tempting, but... Vaughn, you are not on the ceiling, and you're feeling a little bit... Healthier. Reach down and pick up that potion. And I'm going to quaff it. Greater? Yep. Uh, yes, and we should have a macro. Yep. For 14 more hit points. Pretty good. So it's a free action if you don't move. If you do move, it's a bonus action to drink a potion. Yeah. Uh, I'm on a bonus action. It. Yep. Um... And oops, I just realized this gravity trap became a battle. 25. Uh, I'm gonna charge in, see an Alaric do cool stuff. You know, I'm gonna be like, leave some for me. <laughs> <laughs> Feel like empowered. Uh, rapier attack. Uh, one close. Uh, psychic blades. Yes, that does hit. 16 points of damage. Yes, and these creatures are not immune to psychic damage. Uh, all of you, as you're getting close to these creatures, as they're getting close to you, you feel a horrifying stench coming off of it as well. These are nasty. And I think that's all I can do. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I guess I can move one more in to make space. He's asking to be attacked by this other one. Begging, nope. begging to be attacked. <laughs> <laughs> is what it is. Uh, it's the end of my turn. Yep, this one will run at you, loping with its long claws, Bon. <laughs> I hope tries to stand in front of it. <laughs> and yet, and yet it misses terribly. It's not used to fighting such a small, squirrely target. As its claws do not hit home. Iobear, now this is going to happen. Uh, any creature that starts this turn within five feet of the ghast must succeed on a DC 10 con save or be poisoned until the start of its next turn. I don't think I can be poisoned. Oh, that's true. I think we looked at this last time. I yeah, can, uh... it's a gear force thing. 
your robo bear? Yeah. I am immune to disease, poison, damage, and the poisoned condition. So you do not smell anything. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, I am going to move myself over here <laughs> to try to distract both of them. We'll see how effective that is. Um, and I'm going to go after this one, number one. I'm going to take my attacks on that. So first I'll, I'll go at it with my bite. 16. Hits, yep. Okay. So that's five piercing with my bite. Only because you can't smell it. That's why you're actually going in for the bite. True. <laughs> and then claws is an 18. Yeah. And then... 14 slash oh, okay. Io, with the one hit of the bite and claws, you actually knock that creature to the ground and just smash its head in. <laughs> Wait. And I turn and I put my my maw right next to this thing and I just growl at it to nice. try to totally draw its attention towards yeah, me. Yeah, I've talked before. D and D needs like a solid taunt mechanic, like an actual mechanical taunt system. But I appreciate the. The flavor for taunting as well. And that is my turn. Uh, Rai, you are in the ceiling room. I love that both of these trap situations then turned into combat situations. Uh, I need a strength save from you as you definitely are pressed a bit by the gravity. Uh, you get to roll 2d4 force damage. You feel the weight of everything pressing down on you. Uh, you took five force damage, and then you are still yeah. in the ceiling. Consider difficult terrain. All right, so 10, 20, 30. All right, as you step there, Rai, the uh, floor and the gravity suddenly, or not suddenly, but it, well, it does suddenly for you, reverse completely and you can fall now i would let you because you have seen this situation happen before to make a dex saving throw uh because based on what you've seen what everybody else has done this is the spot so you would be able to kind of prepare for it an 11 uh 11 not gonna help you you may roll 3d6 spirit you try to like gauge it but it just flies up too fast you take nine piercing damage I get, I've done more damage to you this session through just environmental hazards than any creature has ever done to Rai before. <laughs> just, just being Rai. <laughs> um, and then from here, I can't see or do anything, so I'm going to dash uh, into the room here. Okay. And that's my... Well, I... Um... I can drink a potion as a bonus option because I have another, another regular one as well. Yeah. So I'll just uh, <clears throat> I will drink that one as uh, a normal healing one. Eight. Yeah. Right. And that was my turn. All right. It is uh, Lucian's turn. I will mind sliver that. There. Intelligence saving throw. saving throw. Not bad, but not good That's enough. It. 13 yeah, nope. against a DC 17. More psychic damage. I need to throw more rugs and like golems at you guys. Like, things are immune to psychic. <laughs> Ugh. For two <laughs> psychic damage. <laughs> we'll take care of that ourselves. And but, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you have to remind me about the saving throw thing if that happens before the end of your next turn. Yeah, I think that's what I was kind of going. More than damage. <laughs> okay. I'll just stay there. <laughs> All right, uh, Alaric, the gas is that gas is dead, so you no longer have to worry about its stench. 
which weirdly I guess goes away as soon as yeah, it I was dies. Say, I would almost <laughs> say that it, you'd think yeah. it would be even worse, but yeah. <laughs> mechanically it stops happening when it dies, I guess. Just point my uh, rapier at it from where I'm at, hovering off uh, off the ground, and uh, needs to make a DC 18 um, save. What kind of oh deck save? Okay, for Sacred Flame. Boy, that's some good damage from Sacred Flame. Uh, deck save is not that good. I'm not rolling that bad, but you guys have some killer saves these days. For twelve radiant damage, it does not a fan of that. It like shields its eyes with its claws. Judgment has come. Bon, I do. You can smell the stench. Give me that con save. That minus modifier. Oh no, it's a zero. But it's a two. Uh, you are poisoned. Disadvantage on attack rolls. Uh, blind cider means I have advantage when I have an ally within five feet. Um, so just a straight roll. Okay. Holding your nose. Yeah. Uh, I don't have anything else to reroll that, so it's eleven. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, just bats your blade away and cackles. Um, but since you were ineffective at it and the bear just ripped apart its ally, it will turn its attention to the bear uh, with its claws. I O. More offended somehow. Mm -hmm. Twenty-three Oof. attack for eleven slashing and forcing another con save to avoid the paralytic claws. To stave off easily. Uh, it is your turn, and you can't smell anything. All right. So I'm going to, I don't know any better, so I'm going to bite at it again. 12? Oh, sorry. I've got Ring of Poison Resistance, but that doesn't do anything for me here, right? Would it give me advantage on the check? Uh, what does the ring say? Um, I'll look it up. While you're if Ring of Poison Resistance doesn't help you to be poisoned, then what the fuck is the Ring of Poison Resistance doing? Yeah. <laughs> you, need I was, to, you need to go talk to the store and owner like, again. Kind of thing. And be like, man, uh, this... <laughs> uh, go go on it with the your turn. I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to interrupt. No, yeah, I, uh, the, no, 12, the 12 does not hit the gas with the bite. Okay, then I'll try with my claws. 14? 14 does hit. Snaps Nine your slash. jaws and it kind of dodges out of the way and you just smash it in the side. Four, nine. This one's looking pretty wounded now. And you definitely have its full attention. All right. Uh, Mr. Rye. Uh, it's going to slide over one and firebolt. I guess. 22, 22 definitely time. hits for 9 damage uh, did not get the kill this time with the fire but uh, definitely burned up probably the last few shreds of its clothes and uh, scorched a lot of its skin and this thing is uh, staggering now, it looks extremely bloodied and that's it that's, that's my turn Lucian I learned my lesson on that last act, so I'm going to Ray of Frost this time. 13? Uh, does hit. Does. Found wow. its AC, yep. Or 8 cold. This time was the fire and then the cold. <laughs> uh, but, not, <laughs> but not a killing blast. This was a very healthy ghast. Uh, I... I can't keep repeating about how injured it is, but it is even more critically injured. <laughs> a sliver, just a sliver. 
Uh, is that it? That's it for me. That's All right, it. Alaric. Seeing that it's been hit with everything else, mm -hmm. try to finish it off with a spectral hand to the throat. Mm. 28 definitely hits. Ooh. 10 necrotic. Now, you said that your necrotic goes through resistance. Is that correct? Yep. All right, Alaric. Somehow you know that's the case here. This creature has that extra defense, and you can feel your power like channeling through your magic, and you just push forward against it and just clasp that skeletal hand around its neck and just kind of do the neck jerk thing real quick, and it goes, and it just kind of twists and falls to the ground. Knowing that it was knowing that it was depending on resistance, that was just to give it that last little bit of your powers are useless here. Nice. Uh, the area appears to be no longer hostile. However, you hear a muffled whimpering sound uh, beyond this eastern door, which those two ghoulish creatures were clawing at. And I think before we investigate any of that, uh, it's time for us to take a break. So why don't we take a break and we will come back in about 10 minutes to investigate that. Returning from our break, I am sad to report there are no longer any Thin Mints in my fridge, which is a big, big bummer. We've been, I think the wife and I have both been uh, sneaking those once in a while. Neither of us would admit when we would eat one, but the box has gotten uh, fewer and fewer, and now it is no longer in the fridge. Uh, you guys have been through a pretty big gauntlet of events here already and been pretty battered and bruised. Uh, no hostiles at the moment inside this uh, more normal sized room. There are uh, a long corridor to your south, doors to your west and east, and the eastern door had those two ghoul creatures clawing and scratching at it, and then uh, you can hear kind of a faint whimpering sound coming from this eastern door. Let's go check it out. Yeah, I would come over and sniff at it. <laughs> Somebody opens it up. It still smells like dead ghoul in this room. It's it this is the one where they were, right? Yes. Over here. Yeah. Uh, like what kind of whimpering? What kind of whimpering? Uh, is it like crying, sobbing? Is it pleading? Is it... Uh, roll a perception check. Oh, did we ever look up your poison thing? Your ring? I did. did. You... And it's it's just resistant to damage. So Wow. But I think that poison thing clears at the start of my next turn. I think you're right. Uh, I am trying to do perception. 19. You hear a sad whimpering and you hear sounds um, in common, uh, somebody speaking, um, sounding like kind of a, a male voice, but kind of distorted, saying, please go away. It hurts, hurts. 
leave me alone. Uh, and uh, Bon will look at Io <clears throat> Bear, uh, and like nod and say, There's a, a voice on the other side of this door, uh, through the telepathy thing, mm-hmm. and um. I think Bon will knock whatever this version of shaving a haircut is in this world. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Um, you hear the voice seems to grow more distressed. It says, no, no. I would probably say back to you, um, open the door and, and jump back. It's like telling us it doesn't want us to get near it, that something's hurting it. Is it us or is it? Uh, can I, hearing it being this close, can I roll like a, try to roll like an insight or something to see if it's, if it's distressed at our presence or if it's something else? Yeah, give me an insight check. Uh, and also, uh, Bon will be like, Lucian, you're a little more empathetic than I am. Maybe, uh, maybe it'd be better if you talk to this one. I've become jaded over the last few weeks. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I can open the door. I renounce my kindness. <laughs> I can open the door. Screw I don't you. care as much anymore. It's, it's kind of freeing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was still up on the... <laughs> Lucian, say it isn't so. You're my hero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll open it back away. Yep. And I would step in front just to see to make sure there was no danger. Okay. Uh... Bon, you open the door and back up. There's nothing immediately there. What you see um, is what looks like a small, almost like closet space um, that has a shelf kind of along the back. And the shelf is mostly barren, but has a few uh, empty jars and like some scraps of linen. Um... Io, you kind of just have your giant bear form still uh, looming on the door, and uh, you think you see like shadowy movement. Uh, you, you begin to sense this closet actually extends um, in uh, it's like a T shape from here. So there's like sides to it, and you can see um, what looks like a some kind of humanoid creature seems to be uh, huddled in one of the corners. Okay. Oh, I would, af- after the initial, like if, if somebody didn't jump Bon as he opened the door, yeah. I would back up and give room for Lucian to step in and, and, and talk to him. Okay. So now I'm sticking in the doorway. <laughs> I'll fly in like Peter Pan here. And, uh... <laughs> think this of the wonderful guy. things. <laughs> think of very little things. Um, first, I'll shout in before I step in. Um, <laughs> Heads up. Who, yeah. Hello, who is there? Are you hurt? Who are you? Speaking quite, they're speaking, they trying to trick now. Now I assault my mind now to my body already under pain. We can probably help if you can you come out? Can you move? Um Does it need does it need you? peace, Lucian? <laughs> it uh kind of peeks ahead and Lucian you can see as it as it takes its head and kind of peeks around the corner uh you note that 
it's humanoid, but it looks more ghoulish than anything else, and yet looks quite different from the ghouls you just fought. It has, it doesn't have like fangs, like in its mouth, and its face um, appears to be more expressive and has these big, sad eyes that kind of glow, and its whole skin is kind of stretched, and it um, un kind of folds itself from this dark corner, and you realize it is tall, frighteningly tall. It kind of towers over you as it um, takes a step out into the room, and it looks like a again a ghoulish style creature but very tall elongated limbs but none of the sharp claws or sharp teeth that you're used to and despite it towering over you it seems to kind of flinch in fear as it as it's stepping out and you note that it has what appears to be these spectral swords stabbing through its body in multiple places and multiple angles like it's just a giant pin cushion, except it's going all the way through at, at different spots. And its face is a mask of pain and terror. And it kind of looks at you and says, What are you? What are we? Uh, who are you? Oh, who are you? Uh, well, I am Lucian. This is, and I'll just go around the room. <laughs> <laughs> These are my associates. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the work friends. This is Io Baird. <laughs> Sometimes known as Io. <laughs> you are not dead. <laughs> no, and I'd fun. like to keep it that way. Yeah. <laughs> It is this the brother? It runs at you, Lucian, but not in anger or hostility. It runs at you like a child running to a parent, like a lost child. So it runs at you and attempts to embrace you, which uh do you try oh. to avoid that or do you allow it to happen? God says, who dodged a bullet? <laughs> <laughs> glad, you took, glad you took this one. <laughs> I step this way just as I see yeah. all this happening. Yeah. Not re I just mean, stepping. My my reaction would be step back. Okay. So if you try yeah. to yeah, naturally avoid it's it, just, which which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and it rolls a nine. So <laughs> it uh it steps back and it, it, it like grasps at nothing as it tries to grab onto you. And says, Please I'm, I'm so scared this voice is in my head and the pain is tormenting. Seeing all the swords, they were the brothers were betrayed. This looks like one of the other brother. Yeah, what is what yeah. is your name? Uh he kind of cocks his head for do a moment. Remember? Says I do not remember. And it tries to do the same thing. It tries to go at you again, not in anger or rage but in like trying to instill comfort but yes it is covered in swords <laughs> so again you can try to let it happen or you can try to resist it i'll stay there but as he's like trying to reach for me i'll say um masudi sent us masudi is looking for you something i would i would bring the brother's name into it okay sure so it comes up, and as you stand there, it wraps its long arms around you and presses up against you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to count this as a 
Uh, well, it would have hit you anyway, actually. Fun stuff. 23. Um, and you feel those swords press into you, <laughs> Lucian, taking 20 piercing damage. God. And you become <laughs> grappled and frightened at the same time as you seem to feel its fear wash over you. At the same time, the, the others see this as well. The creature seems to become calmer as if it is either drawing comfort from you or you are just taking some of the fear from it. Now, the rest of you, how do you react? I'm not putting you in initiative right now, by the way. We're kind of treating this a little more loosey-goosey, but how do you all react to that description? This large, very frightening-looking creature has wrapped its arms around Lucian, essentially grabbing onto him um, in an embrace, and yet you can see Lucian just, like, you know, visibly jerking from the just walking Iron Maiden that is this creature. Can... With me being right there, can I attempt to either with my teeth or not? I'm not biting him. Um, can I attempt to try to, I don't know, grab a hold of one of the swords and like try to remove it? You, yeah. yes, you you try to either, yeah, with your teeth or claw or something, you try to go and just try to gingerly grab the sword and you pass right through it. It appear they I described them as spectral swords and they literally they're in like they look like they're in place and visibly hurting him, but to you it's just ghostly. But but but, but to Lucian, they're real? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Did that I do did scream I notice with my perception, did I notice it react at all to the name Masudi? Yes. So it does start uh when I just want to make see if any of you wanted to react to that uh, this uh, immediate effect of having Lucian get grappled by this pincushion creature, but yes, it does. Uh, in in addition to the creature calming down, uh, Lucian kind of manages to say that just before you get like stuck, like to the creature and mention uh, Masudi, and the creature seems to uh, you see a little bit of light, um, kind of flash in its eyes as. Masudi, that is not my name, but this is a name I know. I'll produce my my whole, uh, holy symbol of Wotan and present it to him and say, I am an emissary of Wotan. Release him or you will be ended here. Does somebody have calm emotions or something? Like, <laughs> kind of um, what is his? I'm player um, memory is lacking. Yeah, but we were told the brother's name. Uh, yes, Makani. Makani. Yes. So mm. Masudi was the the uh, ghostly uh, figure you met above, who was initially looked like he's about to attack, and then he kind of calmed himself, and then kind of told you the whole story about the. Uh, how they trapped this evil creature down there and they all lost their lives after the fact. And then uh, he suddenly awoke when this, when the grave robber thing happened I mentioned that he and his brother were here and uh, his brother was cut down in front of him, murdered violently. And then he managed to fight back and uh, basically finish off the attackers. But then he himself had suffered a mortal wound. And so none of them made it out alive. And he was very concerned about his brother since he awoke to his undead state and hadn't seen him. But he also said he never went down uh, this low because he could feel the the influence of the ghoul king. But yes, he did I tell would, you to look out for him and that his name was Makani. So I would do say I feel like head. I can get out of this embrace? Uh, <laughs> Does he have me kind of wrapped really tight? Well, you could, you could, uh, I, I will let you do as an action. Um, unfortunately, if we get to your action, it looks like you are going to be taking some psychic damage, uh, but you would That's be why. able, yeah, you would be able to escape um, but I'm basically going around seeing if other people want to react. So, uh, Alaric basically threatened him, uh, and the creature, uh, Lucian, you can intimidate him too. I'm yeah, intimidate, intimidate him yeah, 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 intimidate. Right um, and the creature, um, looks terrified of you, Alaric, but his grip tightens around Lucian. You can feel it just. I would like to say, I suggest you pull yourself together and sit on the ground. Um, 
and I'm going to cast suggestion. I've got to upcast it um, to level three, though. I don't okay. think that does anything. Special. Um, Wisdom save. If it, if it yeah. can't be charmed, though, it's immune to the effect. Um, I will say that I before you... I, I won't make you waste the spell slot, but it does... This creature does appear to have the charmed condition immunity. Um, for some reason, you feel like when you're casting the spell, you can feel this creature's unique kind of undead situation that it appears to be in is making it immune to this condition. As if maybe it's got too many conditions already like in its head uh, to be bit. ordered around. I'm okay to keep casting the spell. I wouldn't have known that. and it's It was my shot to try to help. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but when so you, I'm going to try an action unless Rye was going to do something. To I'll let, it. I'll let Rye have a choice. And then I think we've gone around to everybody, at least trying something. Right. So yeah, Rye, what is your uh, response to this? He's, he's ready to shoot. Um, you know, especially now that it's kind of taking action. So it's kind of readying, uh, readying a blast. Um, but not pull the trigger. Just takes out all the guns and be like, "You better fucking let him <laughs> yeah, go right here. now, man." <laughs> Lever pull back. Be, be cool, honey, buddy. <laughs> We're like little Fonzies. Oh. <laughs> like all little Fonzies in here. What's Fonzie like? He's cool. Fonzie's cool. <laughs> uh, all right. So Lucian. Uh, let's see where was that. Why did I scroll up so high? Uh, at the end of each of turns. All right, so Lucian, you can still respond to this. You can escape. You can cast spell. You can say something. I'm um, going to misty and... step out of this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can you can misty step out. It's a good way to get out of a sword stuck situation. <laughs> Far away as I can. <laughs> and that was a bonus action, so you could still uh, right. do something else if you want. Um. I can't cast a leveled spell, though. So I will say it appears like it still doesn't want to fight, although clearly its hugs are very painful. Um, it did not respond well to Alaric's intimidation. Um, and then, but whenever you spoke to it, it, it does, it, it appeared to calm down a little bit and respond. Um, you know, to what you what you guys were saying, so I'll say that. But we're still not fully in initiative order yet. <laughs> they uh. Mm. This... Are yeah yeah. So I'll bring up. A... Does the name are you Makani? Um, it looks saddened uh, with you teleporting away. It says Makani Masudi, uh, and it seems to start recollecting. Say it's their family. Yes. My family it starts looking around and seems to maybe find something of itself. And it, as its arms are kind of, you know, retracting down, it kind of stabs itself on these spectral swords. It's, oh, it hurts so bad. This pain. Who did this to you? Was it the, was it the ghoul king? Uh, it, if you mention oh. the ghoul king, he'd be like, his his head snaps up and says, "No, no, it was just people. Just people did this. We are the real monsters here. We thought we could trap such a creature, and we did. We did trap it. My brother and I, Masudi, we trapped it here in the family tomb." 
and those we hire and turned and tried to kill us. And he looks down and he, he like takes a sword and just like cries out in pain. They killed me. I last I saw my brother's look of terror and rage. I did I awoke to pain and fear and the dead the monsters they torment me further because I do not obey I do not obey this king and I feel him be very upset about this all the rest of the dead they have to follow him they do what he says they bring in the bodies but not Makadi Makadi torments himself would you like to end this, King? Once and for all? Wait, I... Yeah. Is that why you have yeah. come here? I walk the line between life and death. I make the undead go to sleep. Forever. Would you like to help? He shrinks away at that violently and kind of backs up. Uh, into his closet and says, oh, Makani is no fighter, no fighter. Makani is only pain. You've beat him once. You can help us do it again. Makani's torment keeps the king's whispers at bay. If Makani stops tormenting himself, the king gets too loud in his mind. I feel him whispering always, but he does not you, speak louder than pain. Do you have any way of helping us? He pauses for a moment. You must end the king. You must destroy him. He's like whispering now as if thinking somebody's going to hear him. You must destroy him for good. We, we trapped him inside a magic urn. But he must have been released. But Makani knows that he has not left the tomb, which means part of him must still be trapped. And that he feels, the king feels that rage about this. But he is still trapped here. <laughs> destroy the king and destroy this urn, and you will end him for good. Do you know where he is? He shudders, and he points towards this southern corridor. There is a secret a door that the dead come and go. They bring bodies up from the surface. Right around the corner there. Makani hides when they come and go. But they still torment him. He looks over at the bodies under Io and still shivers in fear. Masuri said something about that to try to trap him to not do it unless he's taken damage. Um, he says, uh, if the urn is still exists and Makani thinks it must be so, if the king is still trapped in this place, then the urn could still be used in such a way. But Makani could not see anyone doing this. It was trying to trap the king that befell our fate. Only by destroying the king can you end this curse. But the urn must be destroyed as well. Here it has now become a vessel for the king. But... Perhaps, perhaps, destroying the urn would weaken 
looking as well. He might be uh, connected to it. And he finally puffs up and gets a little more confident. See, we did do something right after all. Could be the key to his destruction. Who mentioned my brother? Is he? Any kind of gestures? Is he like, like Makani? He avenged your death. He takes a deep breath and just, even though he doesn't breathe, he just nods. Ah, Masudu, he was a good brother. What's in uh, this other door? These are the internment alcoves where the family kept the knop jars for the embalming rituals. But uh, a news urn is going to be further down the hall? The king was trapped in a secret chamber that lies even beneath this one, far to the south. You will have to go deeper. I have you... seen the king emerge from there, but he does not venture outside of the mausoleum. And yet so, the secret door, end of the hallway, downstairs. And yet, okay. his power extends still. His urn's going to be pretty obvious. Uh, Can he, like, give a description of <laughs> the trap that he put him in? Like, yeah. like you don't have to go through it. You take out a thing, notebook. But... You're like, I need you to be very, yeah. now concentrate, Makani. I need you to really focus on this. What did the urn look like? How many traps between here and there? Right, right. Uh, it's it's no, like the other brother, basically. Like, give me the, yeah. <laughs> how many rugs, how many fucking rugs are there, Makani? I need you to be very clear on this. Um, Still he, taking bits of wool out of my teeth, you know. He seems to think for a moment and says, uh, it's Looks like uh, much like a burial urn would be, but uh, covered in magic glyphs. Uh, I don't know what the state of the king's chambers are. If such a thing would be easy to find, but it is one of those objects that you'll know it when you see it. I am confident of this. You don't know of any special altar we can pray to and, like, uh, recuperate ourselves <laughs> down here? This area is not safe, but... Uh, he points to, like, the the door opposite of his. But uh, Makani likes to hide in these alcoves. Uh, the dead uh, do not like to venture out here in, in the inside these tight rooms. Akane finds them comforting, and it's a good hiding spot, so... Just uh, beware, the cool king can animate the dead, and there are lots of dead inside the Ilya family, too. Ilya, I remember the name. <laughs> he gets more and more, like, confident, and... But you, you also note, as he talks more and kind of forgets about his pain, his face kind of twitches. Says, I... I, uh, the king's whispers grow stronger. He really doesn't like being the living here. As he kind of backs up into the closet space and starts shutting the door and wincing from his pain, he says, I will... Remain in here for safety. But uh, one more thing. There is another creature here. She makes her lair somewhere to the south. 
She is very scary. Screeches a lot. Uh, it feels Makani with fear. You, have you said screeches. Yes. I don't know what she is. Um, he points a long uh, hand at you, Alaric, and also at you, Lucian. But she kind of smells vaguely like you two. And he kind of absently, like, puts his uh, hand on his, like, mouth and kind of rubs his, like, teeth. You are quite finished. I'd like to go into hiding now. <laughs> <laughs> Just awkwardly shuts the door. I think all of us are sitting here just soaking in exactly yeah. what you just said. <laughs> what? All right, we need to save our game right here. <laughs> Hard save. Potential risky place for a long rest. Press forward, take on the <clears throat> shrieking woman thing vampire at the end of the hall, come back and rest. Or just try to run past it and fight the BBEG on on no on on empty. I, I will say you guys could definitely get a short rest by crouching in this alcove uh, in here would be probably a, a safe maneuver, as Makani pointed out. Um Long rest would be pretty tricky in the middle of a villain lair who seems to know a lot of what's going on. But I think we could definitely swing a short rest. Are we up for a short rest? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Roll of those hit dice. Uh, I use Song of Rose. Uh, do, do we get cool? Uh... Which is a D8 now. Nice. Nice. And it's just once, right? Okay. Or is it per spent? God, look at these freaking um, dice rolls. <laughs> anytime so you oh. roll hit point or hit, anytime you uh, regain hit points at the end of a short rest by spending hit dice, you can regain a d8. Okay, so it's once per short rest. Yeah. On oh, Eric, I'm showing that my mark of blood is recharged. Okay. Must have did that when I was in town. Yeah, I don't know what all items you guys have that uh, work on recharges or anything. Or items in general. I think like Vaughn's got a circle of blasting. That's a long rest. A long rest. All my stuff is long rest. Okay.
I don't know about this vial of sunlight. What is... Vaughn, you've got the perioptive wound closure. Does that help you with healing? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I I rolled max damage anyway. Or max max damage. <clears throat> Sorry, what were you saying, Isle? Or, uh... I was asking about this vial of sunlight. Is that... Uh... Every day. Light like, no. uh... And then you've got the holy robes, too. Sorry. Somebody does. Yeah, they're. Um, I've I've only been using Sacred Flame out of them yet. Okay. I've been saving that as a big saving that as a big gun for later. Yeah, it's a good sized gun. Yeah, uh, Bomb. Whenever you roll hit die to regain hit points, you double the number of hit points it restores. Yeah, I added the. I was four short, but that would have been the four that I needed. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so you guys can relax amongst a dusty closet filled with empty conflict jars and scraps of linen. Uh, after Bond retells his uh, whatever story he told. Um, he, I hate with, sand. Chapter fourteen. Yeah, yeah there. I still <laughs> fucking hate sand so much. It's a slam poetry. It's my dissertation. Um, <laughs> this is why sand sucks. Uh, I will say, uh, I am pretty tapped, though. There's not much more in the tank. So, buckle up. <laughs> Well, that can't die thing is like eight hours, right? Uh, it's gone. He already used it because he <laughs> mashed against the floor. Oh, he literally would have died uh, coming out of the gravity trap. Okay. Was saved to I the mean, grace of the fastest use of death word. <laughs> yeah, it is a job. Well, I've got some healing if we need it. I think just and I can. Killing things faster <laughs> is what we need to do. <laughs> do you have a killing thing? Faster? And I'm going to stop walking into things. So somebody else is going <laughs> to need to take I point have, for a minute. I've kept a few things in reserve. How long does flight last, Lucian? Uh, ten minutes. Okay. It's gone. Yeah. Sad Alaric noises. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So Makani had pointed out a secret door around the corner, um, which, since it was basically pointed out to you, you don't really need to make a uh, perception check to be able to see. Uh, appears to be this door literally right at the entrance of this corridor, which appears to have some blood stains in it, as well as more um, doors along the east and west side. Paying attention, listening for this uh, shrieking lady. So, so the door that Rai is by will take us to... So this appears to be a wall that, now that it's been pointed out to you, does appear to be a secret door. Um, go yeah, ahead and give me, over. right, go ahead and give me an investigation check. Come in and out of it. Uh, if you're looking at the door, yeah, that's what he's saying. Okay. So, right. You kind of search around and feel around and look and you see a, a small, uh, catch, um, kind of just around the doors, like a certain stone that's, you know, not like the others or something. And you push that and the door, um, opens. And you can see it seems to lead out uh, into a uh, just dark, dusty chamber, almost like an outer chamber of this entire mausoleum, and yet still inside. And there are uh, footprints and tracks uh, out here as well. Okay. It appears to be a, a, a well-worn path. Okay. Do I see any evidence of this uh, 
shrieking lady around here? Uh, you do not see any evidence of a shrieking lady around here. Okay. No uh, tracks going down this hallway or anything. There like that. is. This area does appear to be uh, heavily trafficked, unlike a lot of the other areas mm -hmm. you've been in, which did not appear to be heavily trafficked at all, which makes sense because there's a lot of fucking traps and things that was designed to kill things. Um, but down here in the previous room you were at, obviously there were what's where you found creatures, and then all in here there are a lot of tracks, and a lot of them are going in and out of this uh, secret door area, and then going north into this room, and then going uh, further south. Okay. Ayo, did you want to go first? Yeah, I think maybe. I could go first and kind of check some perception things in here. I'll just I can excuse go, me. I can me. go second. <laughs> excuse me, part of me. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, and Io starts lighting everything up because she's got the, the light spell on her. Um, <clears throat> I notice a a T or something up here. Yeah, it's a tight hallway that kind of seems to continue around a corner. It's very, like, your bear would be, you know, form would be just rubbing shoulders on the wall trying to squeeze in there. It's a very tight fit, and it's all very dark and claustrophobic, but as it kind of goes around the corner, you see it opens up just slightly, but continues to have more kind of tight hallways in all the directions. Okay. Am I, am I picking up anything as far as, like, sounds or anything like that? Up in this area, or? Um, no. You don't hear any sounds. Uh, go ahead and give me a perception check, though, as you're uh, going along. You do see tracks that are visible. Without even having to make a perception check, you see tracks, clearly, um, going from that door, and they actually seem to wind around towards the north end here. 28. Uh, Io, you note um, feathers. Uh, as if from a large avian creature are kind of sprinkled around uh, various spots. And you even see in like a corner of one area what looks like some like straw material, maybe from like a nest or something. Um, can I think back quickly? Does it hang on a second? Um, Sorry, the cat is literally cat like biting at <laughs> cables and everything. Um, do the feathers remind me of that uh, that nest that we visited? Mm. With that's it. Goodbye. Um, oh, he lost desk privileges. Um, yeah. It reminds you of it. Uh. Well, give me a nature check. Let's let's dust off the rarely used nature check. Yeah, you're not. You would yeah. not be able to identify one feather from another, unfortunately. Okay. Um. But it reminds okay, you of it just so because, like, oh yeah, we met some flying yeah. creatures before. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Player has her suspicions. Io has zero idea. Mm -hmm. So, um. I'm going to kind of point the feathers out um, and I'm going to kind of move into the room a little bit more. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. Obviously those blasted Kenku are involved. We must kill them all. <laughs> the, yeah, the bandits from the... That's the big bad. It's just that one of the bandits that survived. That'd be amazing. It must be all along. I retconned myself into the ancient cool king that was trapped decades ago. Uh, Io, you see the tracks continue on to the north, and there seems to be a break in the wall uh, along the uh, eastern, uh, on, the, on the right side. Okay, I will follow that path up. Try to... See if I can pinpoint anything. Yeah, and this again, this area looks heavily trafficked. And uh, as you get close to this um, opening, you can... Oh, you can't smell, though. You can feel... <laughs> uh, 
like fresh air because okay. it has been musty as shit down here, right? You guys are way below the surface. It all smells like death and dry and sand and everything. And you you get a, a hint of um, I keep wanting to describe it like smells, but you can you, you so you feel the, the a bit of fresh air on your face. And this opening goes up like a tunnel in a very tight, like uh, John McClane in the uh, vents, you know, army crawling through. It's like that going like at a, you know, 45 degree angle or something uh, going up. Okay. And you recall McConaughey had said uh, the dead bring in bodies and victims and they use that door down there which is the door you guys just went through, the secret door okay yeah laundry so chute. yeah the dead body laundry chute <laughs> every mausoleum needs a dead body laundry chute yep so do the tracks like the tracks led to this opening in the wall, but do they also either go up or did they continue to the south in this corridor as well? Or uh, they do seem to go up. Yes. Um, okay. They don't really seem to go much around, even though this corridor looks a lot bigger. Yeah. As, as you stomp around, you might find like a few random, you know, tracks here and there. But honestly, it just looks like this whole area is weirdly like the it's like you're behind the scenes of the rooms you just went through. Uh, you might not be able to put yeah, yeah two and two together necessarily because it's more disorienting being around. But like you're seeing like the kind of curve of some of the rooms and the hallways, and like okay, like you recall seeing McConaughey's closet was a big T, and you've just kind of you know you can tell like this is a T structure here in the middle, and maybe if you even listen, you can okay. kind of hear his whimpering like on the other side of the wall here. So okay. this kind of goes into like the outer chamber outside, and then. So it doesn't We're appear to be your backstage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't appear to be any other doors that we can get through. This looks to be like a pretty closed off area. Yeah, I mean, it continues to the south as Rai is kind of exploring, but it's kind of the same situation. It appears to be this, just this weird, like entire backstage hidden area. Um, but as you explore, you do note it appears to not be very heavily trafficked. Um, there's no real. Uh, uh, footprints anywhere. Uh, you might find the occasional feather, um, but otherwise, it was just this main stretch right here where you can see there were tracks, and then probably like the equivalent of uh, bodies being dragged tracks. So I guess just big like divots in the sand. Okay. What would be the description of these like circle? mound things i don't i couldn't you know. find what that's supposed to be on the art so i guess it's just like just to give further texture to the to the yeah. sand but like maybe there's like some piles here and there just extra you know just everything's covered in sand so i guess there's something here but i yeah i couldn't quite figure that one out it's, i would have it's backstage of the out. worst existing property yeah <laughs> i would have definitely pointed out those feathers yeah um you know because i i think everybody here also experienced that um, rooftop scenario there. Yeah, those like vulture uh, sphinxes. <laughs> Gypso sphinx. Gypso sphinx, yeah. Yeah. And she was mysteriously absent, if I recall. Uh, she, she wasn't mysteriously go. absent. Yeah, uh, the, the, oh. the dude she left behind was like, she went to go get help in the city. Uh, now you don't know anything oh, okay. around that, but it's not like she just went missing. It's like she left to go get help and then left okay. me in charge. So, got it. Okay. Gon says, "Right, what do you see?" Um, nothing. And I start tapping on the wall down here. So if I, <laughs> now I this has become like uh, what's that movie? The others. I don't want to spoil that movie, but uh, we're like you guys are now like the haunted. Like you're, you're like you're the ones haunting the mausoleum now. You're like tapping on the walls and making noises like on the outer <laughs> side. So all the dead are like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alaric start talking. Yeah. How does, how does it do? 
<laughs> uh, you get no response, though, when you're tapping. <laughs> okay. So we do have to go down that south hallway, then. So go back through, then down. Yeah. Yeah, I to avoid it. If any of you make any sound, you can hear like Makani whisper like, oh no, the dead are coming back. <laughs> Is there a way we can use this to our advantage? Like, can we set up traps or something? What? I'll say at the very least, you have a path that doesn't involve going back through the murder gauntlet of shit. <laughs> no, that's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When we make it, we found the exit. Can we um, listen at these other doors and just see if there's anything without going through the whole rigmarole of opening and sure. checking them all? Yeah, we... you can give me a give me a perception check, and we can. They're close enough together. We can do a perception for all of them. Showing off that awesome perception. Uh, you hear no sound whatsoever on any of these doors. So we can open all four of them at once. In fact, the twenty-eight, you probably hear Makani whimpering from like three doors <laughs> down. Yeah, you can throw them open. All of them. It's more dusty alcoves. <laughs> Each one dustier than the last. Uh, they, I don't know why they needed so much storage room for embalming and canopic jars and everything, but yeah, it's just. A shit ton of what look like very similar closet spaces for putting all those things in. The chamber you enter in below, however, is a little bit different. Uh, the midpoint of this room narrows and twists, separating uh, the two halves of the chamber. The stone floor and walls are smeared with blood, and heaps of bones lie abandoned against the walls of the chamber. And lots of tracks. Um, it looks like it's getting interesting down here, guys. Um, more blood, more bones. Yep. More jackals. Hmm. Uh, can I take a look at the bones? See if there's anything... Special battles, valuables, yeah. Uh, they looked very picked clean, not an ounce of flesh on them. They do all appear humanoid and in various states of being gnawed on. Um, there's okay. not appear so to be any. Like been eaten? Uh, yes, 100%. Yeah. Okay. 100%. Yeah, and you no haven't noticed an ounce of valuables down here either. Everything appears to be picked clean. Yeah, I'll share that with the group. This looks like scraps and leftovers. That's possible to sneak around the corner here. Yep. Ooh, man. Our first yeah. nat 20 of the evening. Alaric nice. becomes the knight. Stealthing his way into uh, what looks like an even more charnel room of uh, bones. Just in heaps of piles, more blood stained everywhere. Um, looks like an absolute feast pile. And then, yeah, you've got a very sturdy uh, door to the south, and then flanked by two of the, uh, at this point, you've seen them quite a bit the Anu Akma uh, jackal headed statues kind of facing away. Having uh, flashbacks to my, my biological sister's temple. I see two statues in front of a doorway. I would like to check for traps. Before you do that, Alaric, uh, with a lot of you entering into this southern chamber, uh, you see around you, you almost hear a very faint whispering um, as if you can hear another uh, summoning. And then many of the bones begin knitting together and building themselves up into humanoid shapes. 
And I'm going to ask all of you to give me some initiative as we've got skeletons. Lots of skeletons. Can't have a bone pile without skeletons. I think it's a rule. Alright. Sending Alaric, though, appropriately, still, uh, as you're going to check for traps, ironically, you are the most not caught unawares by this. And uh, instead, a movement catches your eye, and you see all these skeletons begin to knit together and animate, and all clutching uh, various weapons that just appear in their hands. Let me start with you. Um, Alaric knows that we have a big fight ahead and just sees all the skeletons and goes I don't have time for this kaboom they need to make a, a, a wisdom saving throw yeah each undead oh. within 30 feet of you it's a DC 18 wisdom save let's see how big is that, is that we don't actually see Alaric pull out the turn undead too often either it's everybody in the room. It's... yeah. It sure is. Okay. Alright, give me a minute. <laughs> While I make some wisdom saving throws, please. Uh, let's see. What's the DC on the wisdom saving throw? 18. Alright. I'm just going to go in numerical order. So... 1, 2, 3, 4... Five. This will be really easy to track so far. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Alaric, nine out of ten is how many skeletons become turned. Ash. Ash. They're all if they're uh, CR one or lower, they're ash. Ooh, they are. What is? Let me see. Is this? An undead fails at saving throw against your turn undead feature. The creature is instantly destroyed if its challenge rating is one or below. I have not seen a cleric pull this off ever. So you see... I don't have time for you. All right. Well, I got to give inspiration for that. That was fucking amazing. You just shut that shit all kinds of down. Except for one skeleton who stands firm. Uh, literally, yeah, he just says, I don't have time, and, like, you see all these skeletons magically appear, and they get ready with the weapons, and then they're suddenly, they're collapsing into ash. So that was... one... Literally only, I think, number nine is left. Uh, that one off, turn that one off... Uh, Ryan, go ahead and... <laughs> The good news is, is I'm between Ryan and it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone brought a death domain cleric to its god uh, temple from the god of the dead. There you go. Flex. Uh, one skeleton remains. The rest have been collapsed into ash from one amazing turn undead ability. And this, is, this is the one right here? That is the one right there. Give you a call. Alright. Um... I think of what's best. I will firebolt it. Quick, quick draw. A twenty-six for thirteen fire damaged. Fire damage. I am shocked to say that it actually does not kill the skeleton. Uh, but it's pretty damn close. It's like burned to a near crisp. That's my turn. Updated issue with all these guns. Uh, Bon, you've got a very crispy weekend skeleton left. Can we do it? 21 does hit. Bon. Uh, this is piercing damage, so four. Uh, Probably. 
Uh, actually, no. Skeletons have the bludgeoning vulnerability, but do not have piercing resistance. Oh, okay. Uh, but either way, I had one hit point left after that fireball, so you are able to stab it and feel good about getting a kill. And that's the end of that combat encounter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which, considering the wow. terrible things I've done to you all, I uh, I don't feel bad about that at all. That was an excellent, excellent use of turn undead. Holy crap. That was clutch. I loved it. <laughs> I love that Alaric is just like, no. <laughs> it's just you just matrixed it basically you just like held out your hand to the bullets and then you just dropped them yeah and all the skeletons just collapsed in back into ash <laughs> you're like i was looking for traps don't interrupt me <laughs> <laughs> now back to my trap investigation now back to this door mm -hmm. Uh, 18. Alaric, you're pretty certain there are no traps here. Uh, you do find a, uh, a lever, uh, near the left statue. Um, and you can see, I'll just do it with the same investigation. You can see that there is another, uh, seek one of the walls is very similar to the other wall you went through um, where it, uh, that lever would open that wall. But honestly, I'm just going to montage you through that one because it's it's the same thing. It opens into the outer chamber of the left side and there's, there's nothing fucking there. I'm not going to have you guys wander around this area so I can tell you there's nothing there. There's nothing fucking there. But it is, you know it's there. Um, there's just an equal chamber on that side there's no tracks there's no vent outside it's just you can go around behind the scenes and explore but yeah uh otherwise there's just the door giant imposing door to the south so there's something about like paying homage to the statues um on the first level no, I, th I think what uh, Chris's character, Rakish, uh, had mentioned or had known because of his study of the god was um, that the, the god is just... Nor uh, it's not unusual for the god to be used in these uh, mausoleums and kind of funeral situations, but that other creatures might be uh, wary of uh, upsetting that god's like domain, especially creatures that aren't undead, for example. Undead don't seem to have any problems and maybe the god likes undead you're not quite sure in that relationship but sorry uh just yeah it, like the statues are used kind of and you just saw that in the in the last session was the statues can be used as a deterrent for other uh creatures informally and then formally you've got other things like those uh anubis creatures that came up and actually defended the the tomb What do we hear at this door? Gurgling and shrieking. Uh, roll a perception check. Thirty-three. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-three. Close. I owe you. Uh, feel like normally nobody would hear this, but because you have that extra good perception, you think you feel you you hear um, the sounds of like the occasional soft scratching, and you think you hear the sound of uh, fluttering wings, but you can tell whatever you're hearing is something that's trying to be very quiet. So it's darn Kenku again. <laughs> I'll fucking kill them once for all this time. Hey, I did get this amulet from one of them, which has been really sweet. Yeah. But one of them did get away. So... 
Yeah, I would communicate that um, telepathically. Um, and uh, I can make us stealthy if we need to. Ron says in the thing, I'm pretty sure, like, we're going to open the door and it's going to be there. Okay. You ain't going to attack. We'll try the thing that you wanted to do last time. I can open the door and then back out. Look at that. He's learning. Like, maybe I shouldn't stand in the doorway and <laughs> be hugged by knife creatures yeah. or something. I'm willing to go through first. It's not a problem. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay IO until I evaluate the situation. Because I can't cast healing spells as a bear. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> um so yeah, I mean I'm I'm ready. I am Clutching the holy robes in one hand and ready to go through the door. Okay. Yoink. The floor of this circular chamber is littered with smashed ceramic, broken wood, brittle funerary wrappings, and gray feathers. A human sized female figure with pure white feathered wings and light brown skin stands in a nest comprised of cloth, wooden beams, and other debris that rests toward the rear of the chamber. Um, she kind of flutters uh, her wings. Hang on, back up a little bit. I have to run out of that. <laughs> Let me finish my monologue. <laughs> yeah, everybody's like, ah! <laughs> and then the, the cutscene like, forces you into the cutscene. Um, and she uh, smiles at you, and you can see... Uh, oops, sorry. That's the undo button. What I'm trying to do is that. She smiles and you can see sharp fangs extending uh, from her mouth. And she says, Welcome to my lair. King Tamuri isn't seeing any visitors at the moment. But we're always accepting delicious offerings. And with that, I believe we are going to end our session <laughs> for tonight. I think almost exactly at the three hour mark, which is friggin' fantastic. I was hoping for that surprise round because I've got an offering for her. As, as, so. as I'm sure you were, but no surprise round. I had to do my monologue. Uh, thank you to Brandon, Christopher, Corey, Dory, and Stan for playing. Thank you to all the patrons for helping make these wonderful sessions happen. Shouts to Platinum Patrons, Joe, Will, Thomas, Stan, Brandon, Xenocider, Eclectic, Roleplay, Roll, Christopher, Corey, Big Nut, John F., John L., Eric, Tyler, Nathan, Cap Crystal, Lake, Counselor, Andrew, Daryl, The Reldron, Captain Woody, 79, Stephanie, Andy, Patrick, Jason, Ismail, Ahmed, Lumpy, Spuds, and Sharni. And Gold Patrons, RPG, Paper, Crafts, Pretty Boy, and Yuma, Dead Lizard, Lion, Sam, Drove, Nathan, Fast Like a Tortoise, Scott, Ruffus, Carolyn, Jerry, Glenn, Marcus, and Mark. Thank you all very much for your support. We will see you next time. Thanks for being Thanks, everybody. I'm a healing person. I'm a <laughs> still alive. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the, what is this? The, the portal song, right? From uh, I'm I'm still alive. <laughs> that's the Bond just sings that every time. <laughs> Staying alive. I'm Stay not even alive. angry. <laughs> Tune in next time for the next edition of Saving Private Bomb. <laughs>